Guys, I'm shaving with Rich on YouTube. You don't have to shave with one of these for two to three dollars anymore to get great shaves. You can now shave with one of these and get amazing shaves, even better shaves at a fraction of the cost. Because a cartridge is two to three bucks, as you've seen them. I shave with one of these and it's 10 to 15 cents. Amazing shaves. All you have to do is subscribe to Shaving with Rich on YouTube. Cost you nothing. I'll give you all the information that you need to know so you can start getting amazingly great shaves at a fraction of the cost and you can thank me later. I'll see you there. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Shaving with Rich. Today we're actually going to be reviewing a vintage razor. Uh, if you guys have been watching my channel, um, just the last couple of videos, you might have noticed that I've taken up an interest in vintage razors. Not that I don't love my other razors that are, you know, from the newer generation, but I've really started to take an interest and an appreciation uh, for the previous generations of razors, uh, especially, you know, wet shaving DE razors. Um, which we tie our roots back. So it's because of these vintage razors um, that we have the great razors uh, like you see me shaving with all the time, like the Merker Future, for instance, and um, some of the other, the, uh, the uh, PAA or Phoenix Arson Accoutrement Sidewinder. All these great razors that I have that are the newer razors, they wouldn't be here without these vintage razors obviously um, but my point here is not to state the obvious but I think the reason why I have this appreciation for the vintage uh, razors which I'm just starting to get into is because I realized the influence that these vintage razors have had on su succeeding uh, generations of razors up till today and I love the history um, that is behind th these generations of razors. Um, so it's particularly fascinating to me uh, about that. So enough about about the, uh, uh, I guess, the intro into this video. But I did want to preface it um, with a little bit of background information. So uh, uh, the last thing I'd like to mention too is I, if you guys haven't already seen um, these two videos, but two of my good friends in the shaving industry had a big part in influencing me as to just bringing more awareness of these vintage razors. Not that I wasn't aware of them before, but I would say they were more of the catalyst of what influenced me or piqued my interest to, to kind of start going into the vintage category uh, of razors. And those are uh, the first video that I saw that really was uh, profound to me. I actually did a, a, a link in one of my videos to it. It was Paul H. Films with his shaving den. So up until I had seen Paul H's shaving den, and by the way, um, I am going to post a link to his shaving den video in the comments so you guys can see what I'm talking about. He has such a collection of vintage razors, like a, like a library of vintage razors, that when I saw those I was like, wow, look at all these, there's just so many different kinds and types and um, just amazing. and. So that piqued my interest to begin with. Um, and then I, I started doing a little bit of research uh, on my own. And then one other friend um, that also had a, a big influence in my interest as well. Uh, that kind of was like a one-two punch combination between Paul H. Uh, with Paul H. Films uh, on YouTube and Hunter Green Channel, which is my friend Mark. Now, he is also um, very much into vintage razors. 
Now he started with the same razor that I did, which uh, it was the As Seen on TV uh, razor, which I also have done a review on. So we both have our common ground, uh, Mark and I, and our, our very beginnings was with the, the same razor. Uh, but I it recently um, had been watching some of his videos and I saw him shave with some of his vintage razors and he seemed to just really love them. And as much as you guys know how much I love my Merker Future, um, he actually, M Mark and Paul, both have the Merker Futures and they both love them. Uh, and both of them would vouch for that. Uh, they both love those razors. However, even being as experienced with those razors as they are the, the future, um, they both still love vintage. And uh, so there must be something to the vintage um, is what I started to think about. So I actually posted a tag video uh, which some of you have already, I'm sure, seen, asking them to share more details about their razors. At that same time, um, I actually got online and, and I ordered a couple razors myself. Um, and so today, I'm actually going to be showing you or showcasing one of these razors and the other one is for a future video to come. And I assure you that it will be a great video when you see it. Uh, so with that, without further ado, drum roll. I don't have any drum sounds uh, or effects for this, but <laughs> anyways, here we go. It is gonna be the Gillette Tech Razor. So this is actually a fantastic razor. I was very pleasantly surprised when I saw this. Let me tell you a little bit about the Gillette Tech. So, the Gillette Tech uh, was a very popular uh, razor. Uh, they came out with the Gillette Tech series in the late 30s, through the 40s, through World War II, through the 50s, and even into the 60s. Now with the Gillette Tech, they did have obviously different versions of the Gillette Tech, but this razor uh, was like the foundation of, of that. Um, and they were even issued to soldiers uh, during the war. The Red Cross issued these razors as well um, to people. So this, this Gillette Tech has a rich history in the DE uh, shaving world. Um, so I feel it necessary and, and appropriate to just do a video about it, give a little bit of history about it, because a razor is not just the physical, you know, tool that you hold in your hand, especially when you get into vintage razors. It's, it's about the history behind it. It's about the story. Um, I guess kind of like your ancestors. You can see a picture of your ancestors, but that does not, that doesn't describe them. That doesn't give, um, a proper, um, explanation or homage to them, I guess, uh, for lack of better words. It just doesn't tell their story. And... Uh, just like you, you guys know, you can see that picture of your, your grandpa. He may, you know, not be here. You might remember your grandpa shaving when you were a kid or your father shaving when you were a kid with uh, some of these razors. But if you were just to hold this razor, you know that this razor is not just the tool that you, you uh, hold in your hand. There's a certain mystique about these razors, and that comes in the stories behind them. So, uh... I guess that's a part that I am beginning to ve very much appreciate with the, these uh, vintage razors. Um, so thanks for all of you guys that are still watching. Some of you guys may have uh, dropped out already because of my rants uh, about 
uh, these vintage razors. But being my first video uh, of a review of a vintage razor, I did want to lay it down with a, a, a background uh, so you guys can have a better understanding of what motivates me behind these things because I think that's an important part in this community as we uh, share our experiences, share the products, share uh, all these things. We, we also have that element where we haven't met each other in most cases, but we get to know that person and it's a really great uh, community we have. Uh, so you get to kind of know these uh, people and personalities on a deeper level because of these insights uh, that we give. So I thought that was important to do. So on this razor, so we know that the Gillette Tech series, they actually, like I said, from the late 30s is when Gillette Tech came into the picture, all the way through the 40s and 50s and even into the 60s. So they have a very long uh, succession. So this was a very successful series. Uh, so if you think of a, a car uh, that had a very long running history, uh, like for instance, uh, the Mustang, Let's just use that, for instance. Came out in 64. Still, to this day, they're making Mustangs. They've had all kinds of models, but it's been, the Mustang itself has been a great success. And you could say the same thing about Camaro. So uh, that's what the Gillette Tech is. And of course, they had throughout the years different variations on that. This particular variation has a ball end on it. So it's called uh, the Gillette Ball End Tech and it's gold plated and it's um, actually the date on it they don't have a date stamp but I did research and I found out that this razor dates between 1946 and 1950 um, so I mean it's it's a good you know it's it's pretty old razor um, and to be in the condition that it is it's it's just great now this is an imperfect condition if you look you can see I did shine it up but it says Gillette on there for you uh, here we go um, it's hard to see in here but there is a part where it kind of fades the gold plating fades so this is made out of brass then the next level level or plating is nickel and then they gold plate the nickel. So when this gold plating starts to wear off, what you see and what unfolds is the, the nickel. So this actually, if you look at it in the right lighting, it actually fades on the top from you know the use over all these years of being shaved and used. It kind of blends from a gold into a nickel. Um, and so it, that would be hard to duplicate. So I've been at odds with whether or not I should uh, have this restored to perfection, meaning they'd have to strip everything and then replate it so it's like I was holding it out of the box. Or if I should keep it this way because, uh, and you can see in the handle, I don't know if the, you can capture it, but there's a little bit of discolors, a, discoloring right here, just uh, slightly as well. But it's part of the story of the razor. It's part of its personality. These are like, uh, you know, you come home from the war, uh, maybe Vietnam or something like that, and there's something that is, maybe there's a scar or something um, that you carry with you that is a constant reminder of what you've been through. Now, to some people, they would see a scar on their face, um, and I actually, I have a friend who, who um, got jumped um, in France and uh, they tried to, to knife him. They were trying to kill him. And uh, I think it was three guys. But they didn't know who they were messing with. So he's uh, in the military right now. And uh, anyways, he got sliced from the top of his head down through here into his cheek <clears throat> and he carries you know a scar from that 
Now some people would look at that and they'd say, oh my gosh, my face is ruined. I have this scar and now it's imperfect. That's one way you look at it. Well, I think that the way that he looked at it, my friend, and the way that you know you could look at it and compare it to razors is that was like a that was a trophy for him. That was a constant reminder to him of what he survived and what he he had been through. Not to mention what happened to the three guys who who jumped him that tried to take his life. They they um well he dealt justice to him anyways. So they they weren't very happy by the end of that. He. Uh, he took care of he took care of that business, and um, they could probably have lasting memories of that as well <laughs> to this day. Um, so, anyways, that's what I'm talking about with this razor. Not to go off on these rants, um, but these razors have stories. And if I'm torn between whether I should restore this to where on the outside it looks perfect, because that would be great. It would be perfect looking or if I should keep it the way it is and keep the story of this razor so that every time that I pick up this razor and I shave with it, I see those little uh, variations and little tiny things in it and I'm reminded about the history of this razor. Um, you know, this thing's been through some stuff. It's great. I mean, this was probably some yeah, I mean, I mean, there's stories. If this razor could could you know speak, it's you know seen history. You know, there's been kids that you know watch their dad shave with this, or who knows, maybe the person who had this was you know um, influenced by someone else. Who, who knows? But these are great razors, anyways. Um, so to get into the razor, I know this video is going over. <laughs> I didn't expect this to be that, that long of a razor, but it is a three-piece razor. Now, <clears throat> for any of you guys that want to look, so you've got the handle here. You just unscrew it, you know, screws on right here. You take it off. This is how you get to the blade. Just unscrew it. I'll set that down for a second. Then you have two plates here. You've got the blade that sits here and here. If you see... Um, there's a line that the blade sits so that it has perfect alignment when this covers it. Put the blade in between. So just to show you really quick. Many of you guys already are familiar, but for those of you that are not, just put this blade in here. Just like this. Sorry. And then you put the plate over the top of the blade. Boom. And that's all there is to it. Now you guys are going to see me shave with this in the next video. Um, but that's it. So let me tell you about this razor real quickly. This Gillette Ball End Tech, gold plated, 1946 to 1950. It's not dated, but we know that that's the year range that this model, particular model was made. Is a mild fairly mild razor um, so it's for someone that might be getting started and they don't want to start with an aggressive razor this is fairly mild so it's a little bit more on the safer side that being said it's not cheap at all this thing they made things <laughs> quality that you know in the day like it's very firm it holds the blade perfect absolutely perfect perfect alignment on the blade you probably can't see it but because of the design there's no wiggle room in it it's perfect and it sits firm it's not very bulky so it's easy you know for maneuvering on the face for people like me that have this <laughs> you know it's great anyways so I'm excited about this razor I wanted to share it uh, with you guys and to share my newfound uh, love and passion of vintage razors and the rich history that's behind these so with that being said this will probably be the first of many other uh, vintage razor reviews uh, that I'll add to my collection so thanks for watching guys uh, as always happy shaving and we'll see you next time
Also, real quick uh, before I forget, um, for any of you guys uh, that have watched this through completion, um, I do want to remind you that I am. I mentioned the influence that my two friends here on YouTube, uh, Hunter Green Channel, that's uh, Mark with the Hunter Green Channel, and Paul uh, H with the Paul H Films channel. They both had an influence and a part to play um, in kind of the early beginnings of nurturing this interest of vintage razors. So I am going to be posting, and I know I mentioned for Paul's video that I'll be posting his shaved in video, the link below in the comments. So if you guys are interested, um, if you haven't subscribed to Paul H, subscribe to Paul H. Uh, you will enjoy his videos. <clears throat> And you'll learn, you'll learn from this guy. Um, so don't just click on the link and watch the one video. Subscribe to him, um, and and you'll see after you watch his video, it'll all make sense how why you made the right decision in subscribing to Paul H. The same thing I want to say for Mark um, with the Hunter Green channel. So this guy also. He has, they each have their unique personality, and that's what's so great about this community. I have friends from all over the world. They all have different personalities. We share one interest. Um, well, we share many interests, but our channels are about, you know, this interest. Um, but you get, they their personalities come through in their videos. So Mark's personality comes through in his videos. He also has a... Uh, a great he has a line of vintage razors and he also has uh, if you guys are interested in straight razors Paul has a couple straight razors but he's more of a DE uh, shaver like myself um, if you guys are interested in straight razors then uh, Mark with the Hunter Green channel you'll find plenty of uh, his shaving videos with uh, straight razors different straight razors and vintage uh, DE razors and straight razors and there's a great variety between these two guys so I'm gonna be posting the video that uh, Mark posted in response to my my tag video uh, where he goes in it he actually explains in detail a lot of his vintage razors as well so you'll get an idea about his channel through there also like I said just click and subscribe uh, to these guys because you won't regret it like these guys they're they're the real deal if you want to know about uh more about uh de shaving learn from someone learn from the guys who've been doing it a long time learn from those guys um they always say if you i heard I have another friend here who actually says um to um I forget exactly how, how he, he words it, but pay attention to um, the, the generation before you, I, like their wisdom. So these guys are experienced. They're not just starting and have a passion and it's their new hobby. These guys have been doing it for a, lot, a long time, so they know you'll learn a lot from them. Not only that, but these guys are just great guys. They're entertaining guys both of them in their own unique ways and genuine individuals uh, and it's just quality quality videos that you'll see and very friendly you'll you'll uh, I'm sure develop friendships with with both of them and and hopefully with myself as well as uh, we're all very welcoming for this community uh, we all have the same goal we want to see this community expand uh, we want to bring back the magic of uh, DE shaving uh, to to the world, really. I mean, there's so many people that don't know of. It's been forgotten. This is like a lost art, and that you know, I want to do. A, I'll probably do a video in the future of that. Just that I could do its own video of just that. But anyways, thank you guys for uh, your support. Thank you for uh, watching these videos and sharing that interest. I especially. And I'm appreciative of the comments that you guys leave um, for me in these videos, uh, for liking my videos, subscribing, sharing these videos uh, to your other friends that um, if they're not DE shaving, you think 
this guy needs, should start. He doesn't know what he's missing out on. So I appreciate those uh, shared videos as well. Anyways, you guys are great. Um, and you guys are, are what make this hobby of mine and this passion of mine uh, so rewarding is by uh, seeing how it affects other people and your feedback. So it's very much appreciated. And uh, you guys take care. Until next time, this is Shaving with Rich, signing out.